The Alabama sportsman team are traveling around the state to take a look inside of the trophy rooms of some of the most interesting whitetail hunters in the heart of Dixon. Trophy Rooms. Hi, I'm Seth Johnson. Welcome to my trophy room. So we're going to start out and I'm going to give you a tour and tell you some stories about some of these deer in here but some of you may recognize this room because for about 10 or so years my buddy Lamar Smith would open every Brush Country Monster episode standing right there next to that safe. So um, this room doubles as our production studio so I'm up. I've been a producer in the outdoor hunting industry, TV industry, for about 14 years now, and I've produced uh, a number of different shows. I started out with a show called TNT Outdoor Explosion. Um, I produced um, Brush Country Monsters for around 11 years. Uh, you may have heard of a show, a long range show called Extreme Outer Limits. Um, I actually um, created the whole brand for that. I started started that show with Bob Beck when he first got into the industry. I was their producer for around, uh, what, two or three years. And then um, we closed down Brush Country Monsters and uh, Alan Robig and Lamar Smith and Larry Ellis decided to start out a new show called Precision Hunting TV, really based around uh, precision hunting equipment and uh, what it takes to, to shoot really big trophy animals all across the country and so I've been a producer of Precision Hunting TV for what two or three years now and then of course uh, my passion is turkey hunting. Um, my friend Russell Knight who's a cameraman and editor in the industry uh, he and I partnered together and created Turkey Honey sorry we, we, we partnered together and started Turkey Hunter TV uh, sponsored by Browning so I've been involved with five different TV shows in, in the last 14 years and uh, as a result I have been able to hunt all over the world. Um, I've been to Africa eight times, New Zealand four times, Argentina, and I have hunted uh, just about every big buck steak you can can imagine and I've been really really fortunate. Um, I've hunted high fence ranches, I've hunted low fence ranches, I've hunted a little bit of everything and I've, I've got a lot of great deer to show you. So let's, let's start and uh, take a look at some of these. These two up here on the very top are, are um, I'll call them like my first really big, big bucks because this one up here kind of kick-started it all. This was in Missouri, northern Missouri, real close to Iowa. That buck scored around 164 inches. First like big framed Midwestern deer. I got really, really excited when I shot that deer. Um, this one right here to the left is from um, um, Eastern Colorado, the plains of Eastern Colorado. Matter of fact, I shot that about 400 yards from the Kansas state line. Uh, made a 405 yard shot and he dropped in his tracks, but that deer scores 170 on the nose. Um, this is an Alabama deer right here. Uh, I've done a lot of Texas hunting, as you can imagine, brush country monsters. The name comes from the famous brush country, and uh, that's what they call the big, big, big whitetails in the area. So I've been very fortunate to hunt a lot of pristine South Texas ranches over the years. And so these, all these deer here are from South Texas, um, and I absolutely love how each one of them has their own unique look and feel. I've also hunted the hill country, um, there's a ranch there called the Johnson Ranch that I hunted for a number of years. That's where this deer came from, and as well as this deer. A lot of history with these deer. In fact, um, here's the sheds for that buck right there. So we watched him for several years, and then uh, he was a perfect clean um, 10 point that year right there. And then kind of added a little extra trash. I think he was around seven or so when we shot him. Um, this 
This is my largest free range buck to date. Um, I actually shot this deer last year on um, Precision Hunting TV, scored 176. You've, uh, you may you go out and watch that episode, it's on YouTube as well. But um, such a special deer, a big mainframe mate with all these different kickers on him. That came from the famed Novius Ranch. I've hunted that ranch for years and years and that was the uh, first opportunity I've had it at a deer of that caliber. This one up here, um, for the longest it was my biggest buck. Um, he scores around 175 on the nose. That one came from Illinois. Um, and a buddy of mine that I went to high school with and I, we, we have a, uh, he leased 120 acres and wanted me to go in with him. And uh, we had no idea that buck was even in existence. And on opening day, he comes out chasing a doe and I shot him with a 45 XML muzzleloader and boy, I'm telling you, I came unglued on that one because, um, you know, I was really there having, having a good time with my buddies and we wind up shooting a booner and it's just one of those types of hunts where you just, you know, that's why you love it. You never know. But uh, if I also get really excited, I'm telling you, if I, if, when I, when I don't get excited anymore, I'm going to be done. And that's why I keep telling everyone if I, if that, if that shake, if that adrenaline rush goes away, then, then I, it's time for me to take up golf. Right. But I, I got really excited on that deer. And if you go back and watch that episode, I was, uh, I was in, in full form. Let's just say that. Um, that deer right there, 150 inch eight point, that one came from uh, Oklahoma. That's my one and only Oklahoma deer. Shot that deer in uh, muzzleloader season in October. And I just really love how, look at the, I mean, the, the, the cape on that deer versus this deer versus that deer. It just shows you how different all these deer look all around the country. Just all three of these, Illinois to Texas to Oklahoma, how each one of them has a completely different look to them. Just, that's why I love hunting whitetails so much. Is they're so unique and so different. Each one of them, it's like a, it's like a fingerprint. They're all different. Um, now, I've, I've been to Africa, I said earlier, I've been to Africa eight times. I've had the chance to hunt some, some big animals. This is called, this is an elan, which is the largest antelope species in the world. Um, and shot this one in South Africa in the Limpopo. Um, funny story with this one. And uh, my PH buddy, he, uh, he didn't think it was so funny at the time. But um, long story short was that we were on a property where this was the, this animal, everyone knew it was there, so to speak. And it was one that wasn't supposed to be shot. <laughs> so um, by that, Obviously, on bigger bigger ranches, sometimes they want to let older they want to let a certain type of genetic breed more, and so this one was supposed to be off limits. I didn't know any better, and I'm with my PH, and we were on a part of a ranch where we didn't think this one was hanging out, and we saw a big bull with some cows, and he 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 told me he said shoot that one, and I did, and when we walked over there to him. Uh, it was the wrong one. So I'm ecstatic because he's a giant bull, but he's over there freaking out because we just shot one that was off limits, so to speak. But um, now he lives in my trophy room, but uh, that ranch owner is still probably not so happy about that. <laughs> but uh, I do want to give a shout out to my taxidermist. Um, my taxidermist is Ray Barber, and he is, um, he's around Birmingham. Um, and a little town called Chelsea and uh, Barber's Custom Wildlife and he does some incredible work but I mean if you look at all the detail and all these folds and all this stuff um, they call they call this part the rough believe it or not the sign of maturity is not antlers it's the the thickness of the rough this big this big thing that shows up on their forehead and how dark it is so um, really cool animal there um, tell you about some of the other animals we got up here. This was a, a bull um, gims buck. Shot that one in South Africa too and that one is a 40 and a half inch bull gims buck. So any of those, anybody out there that knows anything about gims buck is that that's, that's a huge one. At the time I think he was like um, number 80 in the world or so to speak. But uh, normally 
Females are the only ones that get that big. Um, you can tell he's, he's a bull because of how thick his bases are, but that's just a really cool one. Um, the big animal, the one that's kind of overlooking the entire room, my Cape Buffalo. Um, that one's a real special hunt for me. I uh, hunted with my good friend Sean Keeney of uh, um, Sean Keeney Safaris, and I took my dad with me on this hunt. I knew he. He's not a hunter, or he did, he was when I was growing up. He was a bow hunter. That's how I got into all this at such a, such a young age. And, uh, but he hasn't really hunted in years and years. And he, he, when I got into TV and traveling, he told me one day, he's like, I, I think I'd like to go to Africa with you on one of these trips. And I said, that would be fantastic. And so I arranged it, and I also decided I wanted to hunt a buffalo because he was going to be there, and it was just a special trip. And so... We hunted Cape Buffalo, had a great time. If you obviously this was a episode of Brush Country Monsters 2 and it was it turned out perfect. And um, if you go and watch it, it was funny because he, he almost got charged by a younger bull and it was it was cool. But uh, made a real great shot with a 375 H and H and then now we have this big buffalo. Um, I'll show you something else that's really cool that I got out of this. So I consider I consider this one of my other trophies. Um, I took all the leather from the back side of this buffalo and I got them to make me a custom gun case. So this gun case is made out of the, the leather from that Cape Buffalo, which uh, another thing I'm really proud of. Just, uh, just the whole deal, custom handmade in South Africa from from the leather from that buffalo. So I don't know if I'm going to use it that much because it's just such such a special thing to me. So I keep it right next to my gun safe and, and I love to tell that story about, hey, this is this was my buffalo as well. So on this wall, um, kudu, that was my first African animal I ever shot. That was back with the TNT Outdoor Explosion back in like, oh, I can't remember, oh, nine maybe, oh, something like that. But that was uh, from Zimbabwe in the Save Valley Conservancy. And um, over here we start a lot more of the whitetail wall. And um, if you look across the whole top, all of these are Novius whitetails, and so Novius Ranch was home to the uh, Brush Country Monster TV show for years and years. This little guy right here, I say little because he was he 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 kicked it all off. In fact, that's where I met Lamar Smith. Uh, I went to the Novius Ranch for a, a deer hunt, and I met Lamar. He was my guide, and we shot that deer as a management buck. And uh, I think it's what 14 years ago now, and that was that was the, the the start to all of this. As a matter of fact, the very next years when we we all kind of put our minds together and came up with the Brush Country Monsters TV show. But I blame that deer for everything. That's where I met Lamar, and then all these other bucks have been different episodes. Um, like this one right here. This was from the hundredth episode of BCM. We shot, I shot that deer on the 100th episode. That one right there, that big dark chocolate horned eight. Uh, Lamar rattled that buck in. He came in about 15 yards and was just staring at me and nostrils flaring. We shot him and he dropped right in his tracks. Um, this one right, right up here, Lamar's older son, which is actually my age, uh, guided me on that one. Um, so a lot of, lot of great history with all these bucks. Over here, now this whole wall in the back, a little bit of everything up here. Um, I also love to hunt mule deer. We've got a good friend, uh, Mike Zmeck, who owns the Blue Rock Outfitters. We've hunted with him. This, this mule deer right here is 176. I shot that one with Mike. Um, I was actually looking through some photos. Shot that one in 2010, so that tells you how long ago that was. This one, um, everyone asked me, is like, what was, 
Well, that's probably your most significant trophy in here. There, there are some huge whitetails, yes. But everyone, I think a lot of big game hunters realize how hard it is to shoot a Boone and Crockett mule deer these days. And so I shot this one. He scored 193 inches. Um, and this one was from Colorado, and I shot it probably four or five years ago. But that is one of um, my proudest animals in here. Made a great episode on BCM. And um, my buddy Darren Clifton was the cameraman on it. Turned out great. Um, up here on the top, we got New Zealand animals. We got everything from red stags to Arapara rams. Believe it or not, um, it's funny. Everything in here I was I've hunted on TV except for one animal. And it's if you look up there at the top, that little woolly looking thing. In New Zealand, they call it the Bob Marley sheep, but that was shot by my wife. So the one animal in the entire trophy room that was shot by my wife, and I believe it or not, that's the only time she's ever hunted. Like right after that, we had children, and she was done hunting. But um, that one's got that one will always stay in here because it was a great hunt, and she was excited. She didn't understand why she was shaking. It was fun. But um, there's some water buck. There's a Two red stags from New Zealand. Um, the one in the top middle is actually a red stag from Argentina on uh, the famed Tipaluque Ranch. Um, red heart of beast. And then over here to the left, full body is a Himalayan tar. That one was from New Zealand from way back in like, uh, I don't know, 09 or something like that as well. But uh, that was a 13 and a half inch tar from, from New Zealand. We were up there filming a show for TNT and we were there for seven days and the, uh, the host and, and his wife had already filled all their tags and shot all their animals and we had like three days left and the, the outfitter said to me, he's like, hey, do you want to go shoot a, you want to go shoot a tar? And I was like, I was like you know, I'm a cameraman. He, and so he, uh, he worked out a deal with me and we went out to go shoot a tar and lo and behold, we shot a mega giant 13 and a half incher which tar hunters know that's an absolute slob and uh <laughs> the rest is history so now he's mounted on the wall but uh it's been a great run i absolutely love the my, my little trophy room here um kind of running out of space but uh, i um do a lot of gun work too i do all a bunch of reloading um now my my, my main passion my main passion is shooting the turkey birds, okay? So Turkey Hunter TV, we started it in uh, 18, I believe, and it is absolutely my passion. Everyone says if you had to choose an animal that you could only hunt, I would say it's, it's the turkeys. And uh, I've, I've been lucky. I haven't shot as many as the old timers, but I've probably shot, I don't know, 60 or so in my, in my time. But uh, I, I tend to spend more time behind the camera than I do anything. But I absolutely love the interaction, and I love, uh, I love calling them in. And even if I don't pull the trigger, it feels like I'm part of it, you know? So to me, um, if you're just involved with the hunt, it just, it's, it's just so exciting. So. It's been a good run. Um, I've, uh, you know, I don't have a whole lot more room, but I'm gonna probably be more selective about things I mount in the future. But um, each year I go out and hunt a few deer. Just got back from Iowa a few weeks ago, shot a good deer there. Um, shot four bucks in Texas this year, and I've got one more, one more hunt slated for next weekend um, at the famed Four Seasons Ranch. So. Um, yeah, but that's my trophy room, and uh, thanks for coming along.